Hi, I'm Kate from All of You, and today I'm going to show you how to set up an acetylene torch and tank system. Um, this is an acetylene torch, and the first thing you're going to need to know is um, which kind to pick out. Um, this is a basic B tank. Um, we got ours from Air Gas in Charlotte, North Carolina. We originally bought these beautiful new things, and then we soon learned that um, we were unable to get those filled since they are brand new and there um, are many precautions when filling up tanks and um, certain companies don't take um, strange tanks, they only use their own. So we had to get this one and when we are finished, when it's empty, we will take it back and they will switch it out for a full tank. Um, so, it costs about $100 just in case you're interested in buying one. This cap is the um, first thing to remove. It protects the regulator threads. Um, it's where we connect the regulator. And the tops are either standard base um, and they need a tape key to move the knob. The knob at the or at the top is to turn the tank on and off whenever you want to. So if um, children are around or you're worried about the safety of the tank just turning on and off, if you bump into it or something, um, you definitely want to get the key instead of something that we have over here, which is just a hand valve. It's um, more like a shower um, knob, something similar to that or like an outdoor hose knob. Um, second, you're going to want to find a sturdy place to put the tank that's well ventilated. Um, you definitely don't want to knock this over. So first thing is first, we are going to remove the cap and you're going to want to keep this because when you return it, you're going to want to put it back on there because it protects the threads that are in here and um, keeps them clean and that way they won't get bent up when moving it. When the cap is removed, you'll use the tank key and rotate clockwise just for a second to open the valve and then close it right back. Now that's going to let out all the dirt and the dust that's in the tank and um, also it's going to let you know that you do have gas in the tank and the tank is full. Next, we are going to, this is the regulator, and this is where, sorry, this is where it's going to connect, right there. So we are going to position ourselves like this, push that in. Let me grab my wrench and tighten that up a little bit. And any adjustable or universal wrench will work in this situation. All right, so now that that is tight and ready to go, make sure that these are facing um, towards you, not down, not up, so that way you can properly read them when you use it. You're going to connect the hose. Now this hose is going to allow the gas to flow through to the torch tip and um, give you the source of gas you need to solder. And you're just going to do the same thing. You're just going to screw it on. And when it is tight, you're going to go back with the adjustable wrench and tighten it just a little bit more. You definitely want that to be tight. So, nothing should be wiggling. If it is, then you need to do more tightening. Next is attaching the handle to the hose. We use the um, Smith brand. Um, that's our favorite here. So, that is just what we use. There are many different types, and you can research all those, but this is what we use here. You're going to do the same thing, 
just screw the other end of the hose onto the handle. And when it gets tight, just tighten it a little bit more. This is the torch tip. Again, it's Smith and it just fits right on there. And you're going to press down and then pull this part down and screw it. And you're not going to want to screw this in with a wrench because um, you can use different tor tip, torch tips depending on what size of flame you need or um, how much pressure you need to come from it um, to solder with. So you can anneal with one or you can do spot solder with another. Next, you're going to do the hand valve. Just screw that right into the regulator. So now that it's assembled, um, we need to make sure that it's properly working. So first you're going to get your key and you're going to turn it counterclockwise about a fourth of a turn. Now if it starts to smell like garlic, that means there's a leak in the tank, turn it off, wait a couple minutes, don't light anything around it. and. Um, disassemble the tank and start over again. Everything's assembled. We are going to um, check the pressure. So, yeah, make sure this is open and turn it. And that one should um, rise immediately. This is the gauge to show you how much gas you have in there and what's in your tank. And this is to show how much pressure is coming out. This one should probably stay at zero. If it jumps a little bit, um, just loosen it a little bit. <clears throat> Make sure it's loose. Turn the tip on. And it shouldn't do anything. And then tighten it up a little bit. You should hear a noise. Tighten it until this gauge gets to three or four. When it gets steady, you're going to turn the tip off again. And then what we are going to do, set the tip aside. This is a solution to detect any leaks in your system. You can get leak detector from um, one of your supply companies or you can just make it. It's a solution with water and liquid dish detergent. So, get a, tooth, or a clean paintbrush. Make sure there's no bubbles on it. And then you're just gonna paint the solution over all the seams to see if any bubbles start growing. That means there's a leak. Now if there aren't any bubbles, go over it again just to make sure. And these bubbles are just coming off my brush. Um, if there are bubbles because of the leak, they'll be growing. So since there are none, we can just wipe that off or let it dry. And you are ready to solder. Awesome. You want to fire it up? Sure. Now you're going to hear that noise again. Make sure that gauge is at three or four. You're going to get your striker. And there you go. Fire. You can adjust your flame. Thank you for watching and um, stay tuned because we will be teaching um, how to make things in the next segment.